Hi, I'm Brian Danola with Autodesk, and I'm here today with Scott LaProd from Gen Swiss and Derek Briggs from Sugami. And we're going to talk with you a bit about a Swiss application, specifically screw making. Scott's going to review a bit about the whirling process in threading a medical type screw. Today we're running a simulated bone screw using our 12 insert multi deck thread whirling attachment you can reduce vibration and produce better surface finish on your medical components. 12 inserts provide better rigidity, better surface finish, and higher productivity on specialty threads by producing finished threads from stock diameter. Maybe you could talk a bit about you know, why you would thread whirl something as opposed to just using a regular threading insert or form tool to, to make a thread on a part like this. Yeah, sure, Brian. Thread whirling is a process that eliminates the need to single point complex thread profiles. On a Swiss machine, you've got the guide bushing, and to do a single point on a thread that's this complex, you'd be doing many passes. So what thread whirling does is allows you to take stock diameter and complete the threads in a single pass at a high rate of speed gives you very good productivity and very good surface finish in one shot. And being that it's an interrupted cut, it's not a die cut, it's actually more like a mill cut. It gives you better rigidity and less chip load per tooth, which results in a very nice completed finish on the major and minor of the thread. So how do we set this up and, and what's the process and, and unique about this Sugami machine for, for whirling? Surely, Brian. So we have the Sugami S206 machine here. Um, that's a 20 millimeter six axis machine. Um, the whirling unit mounts on a modular drive on the back side. Um, there's a hollow ring inside of the whirling unit. Um, the actual cutter body that, that he showed me there, the whirling ring that holds the inserts, goes inside this ring here and bolts in. The bearings in the whirling unit are very big, so we can take a lot heavier cuts, faster feed rates with the whirling. This actual whirling unit here moves for your helix angle for your thread pitch. So what you do is you actually rotate this to the helix angle that you calculate by, by triggering out the, the pitch diameter. And what happens is this gang slide is gonna come down. You're basically doing an ex external mill feature when you're doing the world. So when it comes to setting that angle, are you doing that visually and then just checking the part and then readjusting or, or what's the process there? There's, there's actually a dial that shows zero to 30 degree once you calculate your helix angle, this one, we line it up to about eight, and then we put an indicator on top of the unit. And we'll actually, we have a program that we run that checks the helix angle. Typically when you're thread whirling, if you're within a half a degree, you're gonna get a good thread form. The other key benefit to what we've done is we've added a, the quick change capability where you can actually remove the whirling cartridge from the whirling attachment in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, in order to change out inserts or index to a fresh uh, cutting edge. So it doesn't take me 12 times as long to change an insert Correct. from a single point to a whirling ring Correct. With, with a modular base. I see. I'm going to talk a little bit about the programming process as it pertains to whirling and Autodesk Swiss Solution part maker. So we can bring in and actually see the form shape that we've defined from our screw in the whirling ring. And once all that's defined, we have a specialty thread whirling process in the software. And then we can define our profile that we're gonna whirl. And we can step through and actually see the whirling process occur beginning to end. Once we're happy with all of our whirling process, we can go in and synchronize our process. We'll be able to see a time chart and all of our overlap. So we can synchronize all of our operations, get the most amount of reduced cycle time on the part, and then we can go in and we can simulate. Once we've got the part all programmed and simulated, the most important part is generating the NC program. There's a couple different ways that we can program when it comes to whirling. The G32 is a process that syncs the spindle rotation with the position of the Z axis. So as you move the Z, the C axis or spindle axis can rotate and remain synchronized with that function. Alternatively, if we need more control over the process, we can also output a G1 move. So as opposed to having the G32 and then command our X and Z positions, 
we would do a G1 and command our Z and C, or even more commonly, use incremental positions. So those things would come out one move, synchronized together.